Hey, what's up everybody? We're back with another video and this was highly requested. I've had so many people ask me about this process. So not too much on the dyeing and the painting and all that stuff, but mainly how I antique my projects. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into the video. I did tool this up super, super quick. It just kind of got coaster thing. Uh, just something to do for this video. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, you want to make sure your project is completely dry. You do not want it still wet when you do this. It'll screw it up, make it look funky. Just, just make sure it's completely dry. So I personally use fiving saddle oil. Uh, I know some people use like all oil or, or whatever it could be. Use whatever oil you like using. I just use the fivings. So depending on how much oil you use will define on how dark your project gets. So I just do one quick light layer I don't, I don't go dousing it in oil. So I'm just gonna take some, throw it on a sheep wool pad, try and get some of that excess off. And then I'm just gonna sit there and just buff that in there. I don't go too, too crazy. Just enough to get a nice coat of oil in there. Just like that. So got a little bit in there. So there's a little bit of a wet spot right there. And you'll see that, don't make my mistake. <laughs> it got a little bit wet right there, you can see that. But So we're gonna go ahead, we're going to let this soak in, and then we'll come back to the second part. The oil has soaked in pretty well, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start dyeing. So, uh, I like using these brushes with long stems on them. Well, not stems, but uh, I guess the brush part itself. Uh, that way I can soak up a lot of dye. You need to make sure you bevel in background correctly. Otherwise, what's gonna happen, you load this dye brush up full of dye and you just touch that, it's going to bleed up all over your project. So I'm just gonna go through. And I'm just going to start stabbing that. And it's gonna spread throughout there. Nice and evenly. Give yourself a nice look there, so. But yes, please just, when you go to do this, make sure that your backgrounding, your uh, beveling, and everything you do <laughs> is as just clean as possible. Because otherwise you're going to touch that and it's going to go over your floral. And yeah, I've had that happen to me in the past. It was before I, uh, back when I used to use some of the craft tools, I couldn't get such a super, super clean bevel. But yes, that has happened to me in the past. I've ruined projects. Thank goodness I've done it. I had it happen to me last May, actually. And what the dude was really cool about it, he was like, hey, you know what? I was, I was, I was using brown dye. And the dude was like, hey, you know what? Uh, it, it's fine, just dye it brown, just completely brown. So we ended up going with that. I, didn't, I did give him a discount just for the fact that I did screw his belt up. But it was pretty cool that instead of having to uh, start all over again, he just said, hey, just go ahead and dye that sucker brown and call it a day. So just be very, very careful. Uh, sometimes real, real close, you can't get it all the way. But uh, I've noticed that uh, whenever you go to antique it, them teeny, teeny bits and corners just fill out from that antique. So you, it's not something you have to worry about. But just slowly going around, just dabbling that there by that flower. You can see how nice it looks when you dye that background. You can use brown, black. I mean, I've seen people, not even background, not even background, just go ahead and uh, they paint it. And it looks super, super slick, super nice. So we're just about done dyeing this background here. All right, yeah, so the background's dyed. You can see how that looks. I'm gonna go ahead and dye the border now. I'm gonna use this Cordovan. It's called, uh, I think I dyed, I forget something, it's a huge project that had to dye it. And did not need as much dye as I thought, so now I have a giant bottle, and I just use it all the time to get rid of it, but. So for these borders, I don't do an actual, actual border. I kinda just let my floral be my border. I just like the way it looks. I think it looks really slick. I'll use just two different size brushes, one to get the main part, and then one to get down in the corners. So move your black dye, because I've had this happen to me before. I've actually dipped it in the wrong dye cap, 
and yeah, it was not good. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that dye. Let's go ahead, start working it all the way around. So just be careful. You do not, I mean, after you get done complete tooling up a project, you don't want to make a mistake with your dye and uh, completely screw up the entire project. So, especially when it comes to doing the background, uh, dyeing the background, that can be so nerve wracking sometimes. So you, just, so you just do not want to mess up because if you mess up, you're pretty much on the last steps to finishing a project. So the hours you sat there and put in that project uh, can just kind of go down the drain if you screw up. So slowly going around, trying to get a nice even cut. I've noticed when I said, I know some people who don't oil their projects, uh, and I've also noticed that when you do oil them, so like coating, the dye spreads evenly and looks a lot more even. Where in the past, where I haven't oiled, uh, the uh, sometimes the dye will come out blotchy, and just it just won't look well. So I just always, just always. Excuse me for saying always four times already, but uh, I constantly oil my projects now. It's just it's the habit, just something that leather needs. So it is looking nice, just slowly going around. And we'll go back through with that small brush. Over here, touch that up a little bit. The small brush, and we will. Go ahead and, oh, a little too much there. Let me just slap that on the table and get these corners, all these little spots that are too close. You can go to Hobby Lobby and pick up some brushes, some real nice ones for doing dial work. Uh, I had these long ones right here, but they would just not soak the dye up. They had a nice long brush, but they just would not soak that dye up, so. I don't remember what brand it was, but that was kind of disappointing. I was like, oh yeah, I was like, bam, I could just sit there and do the whole entire part of the background. But now it did not turn out that way. So, so slowly working around. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna set this to the side for a little bit. I'm gonna let that dye dry out. And then we're gonna come back and it's uh, ready to be antiqued. So we're ready to antique. I don't use any resist. Uh, it's just, I don't just, I used to use it back a while ago. I used to use the liquid antique, but this is the way I do it now. So uh, I use the Fibings dark brown paste antique. Uh, sometimes I use the medium brown, but it's uh, more than often the dark brown. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna grab the older one, take a little bit out, and then I'm just going to sit there and just work it in. If you're going to be painting anything, do that before you antique. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I don't use any resists. I just like how it looks without it. So sit there and work that into there. All right, then what all I'm gonna do, is I'm going to take a rag. I'm just going to wipe off the top layer first with a rag. Do a nice, even, I'm gonna be digging down into it too, too much just yet. So go around there, take as much out the top as you can. And then I'm gonna come back through with a wool pad. I get a dirtier one first to clean most of it out. And sit there and just buff it out. Buff it, buff it, buff it, buff it. I want as much of that antique out as I can possibly get. I've had it before where there's too much antique laying down in there, it will crack and peel out. So don't want that. Let's go ahead, buff one more time, the cleaner one. Just like that. That is looking fantastic. So, all right, that's pretty much that. I'm going to go ahead and let that sucker dry and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next two steps that I do to it. The antique is dry. So now what I like to do, I like to take a little bit of tan coat and put it on a rag, just a little bit. I'm gonna be too, too generous with it. And <clears throat> I like to rub that in. I don't want it sitting down in the leather. I'm just going to buff the top off and uh, clean up that 
Exus Antique. So I'm just going over the top real quick. Buffing that out. Just like that. Sweet. So I'm going to go ahead. <clears throat> I'm going to let that dry. And then we'll come back for the final finish. So the last thing I use is a leather sheen. Uh, something I've always used. I like it. And I just put a nice quick layer over the top. This stuff dries pretty quick, so that's super nice. Just like that. And let that dry out for a second. And we'll check out the entire thing. All right, this is the finished product. So I said, I really like how this finishes. It's just, just the way I do all my projects. If you want it darker, you can oil it more. If you want it lighter, you can resist with tan coat before you antique it. But this is just the way that I prefer to do all my projects. So hopefully someone finds something cool in this video that helps them out. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, thank you all for watching. I'll catch you later.